Good morning, class 12. Uh, we are doing chapter 7, section C, if you remember. And uh, the last topic we discussed was cost benefit analysis. So I told you in detail about what is the what is cost benefit analysis, the different steps that are followed for cost benefit analysis. Now we are coming to the next topic, which is uh, the last important topic from uh, this particular chapter, and that is on page number one twenty eight, types of capital. Okay, so this also comes in sec uh, section C in the broad section for five marks. So we need to understand what is capital and what are the types of capital. Capital, as we all understand, is wealth, a set on which our life is dependent to make life more comfortable, that is capital. So what we are going to discuss here, a part of your syllabus, is uh, what are the different types of capital. So, there are five different types of capital that I have showed you here. One is human capital. The second one is social capital. Then we have manufactured capital, financial capital, and the most important capital that is natural capital. So, we'll discuss natural capital in the end. First, for the objective category, I will try to tell you what are the meaning of the first four types of capital. So capital, which is wealth or asset, which is used to make life comfortable. The first one, human capital. When I say what is human capital, capital always does not mean money. When I say human capital, it means your well-being, your health, the skill that you have the knowledge that you have that you can you can apply in your life to make your life better and comfortable that is called human capital okay and then we have the second capital that is social capital social capital are social institutions school colleges a bank any institution in that matter is called a social capital Definitely these social capitals make our life comfortable. It is very, very important to run your life. Like how, how do you gain your skill and your knowledge? You gain the skill and the knowledge through social capital. That is by coming to schools, colleges, various institutions, right? Then the third capital is manufactured capital, something that is made by man, again to make man's life comfortable, like we make tools, we make machines, and these machineries have made our life very, very simple and easy going. The technologies that we use today, that is called manufactured capital. The kind of classes that you are having today, that is an example of manufactured capital. So you can understand even in this particular situation how this manufactured capital is helping you gain knowledge, right? So we have the health and skill that is human capital. We have the institutions that form the social capital. We have uh, man-made tools and machineries that makes manufactured capital, right? And the fourth capital that we talk about is financial capital. Finance, this deals with money, finance. So money is called financial capital. So when we try to try uh, see the importance of each one, each one, each capital, each wealth, each asset, it has its own value in making our lives better and easier. So uh, human capital, social capital, manufactured capital, and financial capital, money, most important to make your life easy. And then coming to natural capital. Natural capital means the natural resources, the air, the water, the soil, the forest, everything around you on which your life is dependent, that is called natural capital. So we can call natural capital as the uh, all the natural resources in the environment 
along with the services that they are providing to us. What service does that particular resource provide to human being that in totality is natural resource? So under natural resource, we will try to understand four functions that natural resources are serving. So half of it we have already done in chapter 3. As I start telling you, you may recollect what we have done in the class in chapter 3. So uh, natural capital, that is resources, what services are we getting from them? There are four services that we get. One is the provisioning service. Okay, so we have done provisioning service in chapter 3. Then there is regulatory service that also has been discussed in chapter 3. We have cultural service and supporting services. So natural resources, they serve four functions. One is provisioning, one is regulatory, then is cultural and supporting. There are four services provided by the most important uh, asset that is natural resource. So when we say provisioning, provisioning function means what the ecosystem provides us through which we can earn money. What are the word? various commodities we get from the environment around us, from the resources around us, through which we can sell and we can earn money. So provisioning under provisioning function, we get food, we get fiber, we get medicines, we get a lot of raw materials, there are uh, ornamental services, uh, you get a biochemical and many other animal products that can be sold to earn money. So this food, fiber, fuel wood, all these resources on which man's life is dependent, that is called provisioning. So how you remember is provisioning service means what ecosystem is providing you. Okay, what you are getting to sustain your life and also to sell the commodities to earn money. That is provisioning. So from provisioning comes from the word what ecosystem is providing you. And then the next service that we get from resources is regulatory. The word itself gives the answer. Regulatory service has nothing to do with finance and earning of money. But these services are equally important to sustain your life again. For a very simple example of regulatory service, for you to get the concept clear inside your mind, if I say a tree takes away all the pollution and it purifies the air, it has nothing to do with money, it has nothing to do with finance. But is this service very important for us? Yes, it is the most important service. So there are similarly, there are so many services provided by plants and animals which do not have financial value, but they regulate the services in the ecosystem. So you can see purification of air is there by plants. There is control of drought. There is control of flood. The recycling of nutrients, there is pollination by insects, all these come under regulatory functions of the ecosystem. So once again, I will tell you the difference between the two that I discussed. When I say provisioning, provisioning means what services are provided through which we sustain our life and we can also earn money. Like when I say food, when I say fuel, when I say medicines, that comes under provisioning service. But when I say purification of air, when I say control of flood, when I say control of drought, when I say nutrient recycling, pollination, all these, when I say control of natural calamities, nothing to do with finance, but very important if, if life is to uh, be sustained on the planet. So these are two services, provisioning and regulatory services of the ecosystem. Then the third one, cultural service provided by the resources around you. 
uh, when you have resources around you, see, uh, let me take one example. When, you, uh, when we see beauty around us, when we see lots of flowers and trees around us, what, what, what is that doing to you? It's doing nothing to you, but it provides aesthetic value. It makes the environment very beautiful. That comes under cultural value. People go to a forest area and they get a lot of knowledge on plants and animals. Educational value, spiritual value, that comes under cultural service of the ecosystem. So when uh, there are many plants and animals who we worship, that is cultural value of the ecosystem. You go to some place and you gain knowledge about the plant and animal and you come back, that is a cultural service of the ecosystem. Uh, many tourists are flocking, uh, uh, used to uh, flock into Kalingpong. Why? To see the beauty of nature, to admire the beauty of nature. That comes under, that is aesthetic value. That also comes under cultural service of the ecosystem. So very important to understand and differentiate what I am telling you, the services provided by natural resources, that is natural capital. We are discussing capital. So there are five types of capital under which natural capital is the most important. And what services do the natural capital provide us? One is the provisioning service, then the regulatory service, then I just discussed with you cultural service. And the last one is supporting service. There are some supporting services because of which we get food, uh, we get shelter, we get uh, other functions of the ecosystem are dependent on the supporting services of the resources. Like nutrient recycling in nature is there. If the nutrients by the decomposers, which cannot even be seen, microorganisms in the soil, which are actually bringing back the nutrients into the soil. And because the nutrients come back into the soil, the plants are able to grow. And because the plants are able to grow, we have provisioning function. We get the uh, food from the plants. So just uh, try to understand this clearly. Because decomposers recycle and they bring the nutrients into the soil, what is happening is the plants are being able to grow and because the plants are able to grow, grow, we are getting the provisioning service. Then if we talk of the regulatory, when the plants grow because of the nutrients in the soil, what is happening is they are purifying the air, they are controlling the weather conditions, they are controlling greenhouse gases. So the regulatory services are also dependent on the supporting service and then because of the nutrients the plants grow and the plants are everywhere and the flowers are everywhere they also provide cultural service that is making the environment very beautiful so what is supporting service some services provided by some organisms in the environment due to which the other services are possible so one example I gave you, because of decomposers, because of nutrient recycling, we get uh, provisioning, regulatory, cultural, all services are there because of the supporting services provided by some resources, right? So uh, please read it uh, thoroughly on page number 128 and 129, types of capital, five types of capital amongst which the most important one is natural capital that is natural resources and the environmental service that they provide and how many services do they provide they provide provisioning regulatory cultural and supporting services and then we in the last part of the chapter a few topics are there uh, from where you get uh, objective uh, questions so i will definitely discuss that uh, with you too in the next class okay thank you class